All right, 1.6 number 50. So we're to solve for x. So the first thing I would see is I have an ln, um, and it's ln of ln of x. So I want to get rid of both of them. So the way I get rid of ln is base e. So I do e. So these ln and this e cancel. So I have ln of x equals e to the first. So I can just write it as e if I wanted to. Um, and then I need to get rid of e again. Sorry, ln again. So I do base e. So x equals e to the e to the first. Or you can just write e to the e. And that would be our answer for 50. This is our exact answer. You could also type it in. All right. Um, B, I'm going to go ahead and I need to get um, x by itself. Kind of like our one inverse from our notes that was a little bit more complicated because there's two x's. Okay. Um, so the first thing I would do is I want to get rid of this e's all by itself. So I'm going to get rid of it. So I add ln on both sides. So those will cancel. So I have ax equals ln of c times e to the bx. Now here is where my properties of logs and natural logs can come in handy. I'm multiplying so I can separate it with addition. So I have ln of c plus ln of e to the bx. Well, that's nice. My ln and my e right here will cancel. So I have a to the x, sorry, ax equals ln of c plus bx. Trying to get b or sorry, trying to get x by itself. So I'm going to get anybody with an x to one side. So I'm going to subtract bx to the other side. Um, and then this is kind of nice to know. It says a can equal b because if they did, you guys would have zero on this side. That's where that that point comes in. Um, and then from here to get x by itself, I'd factor out an x, and then I would divide both sides by a minus b. So I'd have ln of c divided by a minus b. And there is uh, 50 